Hello. Today I'm filming something that might not, well, not might not, is definitely not um, like any video that I've had before, but I figure it's my channel and I want to say it so I can do whatever I want. <laughs> and this weekend I happened to see a bumper sticker um, that kind of, I don't know if it'll be in the title of it or not, uh, <laughs> it kind of made me irate. <laughs> The bumper sticker that I saw, I'm not going to say what kind of vehicle it was or anything like that um, in case that uh, creates in people's minds what kind of political party they might have belonged to or been dissing. But basically the bumper sticker, excuse my language, said fuck and then a political party. The U was a little asterisk, but all the rest of the letters were there. It was very clear <laughs> what that word was supposed to be, not subtle at all. And it was huge. Like, it took the up the entire back of this vehicle's bumper. And I'm not going to say what political party it was, because it wasn't what political party it was that offended me. It was the fact that this driver had so callously disregarded the values and beliefs and opinions of roughly half of the country. Um, I haven't looked it up. I will and I'll have like a little caption at the bottom. Um, but it's my understanding fairly equal as far as Democrats and Republicans which is why you know it, it's at least in recent years been kind of flippy floppy about who's in the White House. Um, so that's why this made me irate. It just disregarded half of the country and and, and separate that driver separated him or herself from the rest of the country very I, I felt kind of aggressively. And I have no problems with people having diff different political views than me. I'm not gonna disclose what mine are in this video. If some of you watch my other videos it might become evident through some like weird science you have, but I've never said. Um, and I won't say in this video. video. <sighs> I'm trying not to, like, get mad. And for some people that might be like, oh, like, whatever. What's the big deal? And it's not even necessarily that this person had this bumper sticker that angered me. It's that, especially in this upcoming, upcoming, upcoming election, it's especially evident of just, like, really, really, you're one or the other. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about, is the bumper sticker small-minded. It, 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 it creates a definite separation that you're either an us or you're a them. And it's just reaffirming the belief that many people have, and that's, you know, you, you are a Democrat or you're a Republican, or you vote for a party that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, and it's frustrating because America was never designed to be a two-party system. In fact, our first president, George Washington, was very adamant, among other founding fathers, but was very adamant about how America should not be a two-party system um, because he was worried that it would create exactly the environment that it has now that it's, it's an us versus them and it is so and I don't use this word like dramatically it is dangerous because when you are someone who is running especially for presidential elections is what we see most obviously but it's, it's also for for Senate and the House and all that kind of stuff. Thank you, sweet baby girl. Um, it means that if you're nominated, even for a primary, mo for you to survive that primary, not even to get elected, but, but to stay through the whole thing, it means you're probably really extreme. You're an extreme, almost caricature of that party's views that you may or may not hold yourself, um, you might just be saying it in order to get to win the primary. Um, and our country was never meant to run that way, 
and the fact that it is now whenever not only invites caricatures of um, each party to to run for the primary and eventually eventually get elected it really um, I don't know if all of you watch the debates or watch the debates on both sides um, but over and over again candidates criticize their um, you know their fellow running mates um, naming bills that they com compromised on and 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 say that they compromised but the tone in which the you they say that they compromised seems to suggest that they somehow let down their voters that they somehow let the other side win when in reality you know that's what you want to do as a, a politician you you want to get things done you want to compromise you want to make the best solution that will help the most people and that's what you're voted into office for I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that someone who is working in any capacity for the government and um, you know working in that way does not hate America and they do not want to ruin it you can agree with the politicians identifications of what the nation's problems are you can disagree with their plans to go about solving those problems you can even predict negative outcomes for those plans but that person is not a terrorist that person is not weak or an idiot or a disappointment to their party or un-American. They are a human being doing the best that they can and the best that they believe to serve the country. And sometimes it's really hard to remember that when you're listening to someone you disagree with. So let's rise the caliber of the words we use to describe politicians. Let's be specific about why we, they do or do not meet our standards. That candidate could be short-sighted or underqualified or undereducated or inexperienced. And I'm not suggesting these words because they're politically correct or polite. I'm suggesting these words because these are the words that allow you to be specific about a candidate and these are the words that allow you to have a conversation. Um, When you use these words, you can talk about individual policies, about um, past stances, about change in stance, about how it's going to affect us in the future. You can't do that if you're just shouting you're wrong in each other's faces until you turn purple. I'm suggesting these words because they invite specifics. Un-American or evil or an idiot don't invite those things. You can't have a conversation about how a foreign policy was short-sighted if the other side is screaming that they are a terrorist. You can't, you can't find a politician that will represent your views if most of the media is creating a caricature for the party or how the person is a demon or how they're ruining America. It just leads to broad, angry generalizations and descriptors that don't help the American people make good choices. They don't help you appear to others as an educated voter, an educated citizen, and you don't have to have a formal education to, to be an educated voter. Uh, the internet is everywhere. It's free at the library. There are newspapers that you can read at low cost. There, there's very little excuse. And when once you do that and you know what your politicians are about, um, you're less likely to use those broad words. And once you know who the politicians are about, you're more likely to see and understand the other side. Don't just watch and don't just read what is relevant to the party that you identify with because it is very likely, um, depending on which party you belong to, that, you know, the representation of that party might not be who's in the White House and, and you need to know who else could be representing the face of America. So, driver with the small-minded bumper sticker 
I encourage you to vote for a candidate who is a person for this election, not a political party ideal. And I also hope that you respect your neighbor when he or she has the opportunity to do the same thing, even if it might be different than yours. Have a great day, guys.